वेलकम टू प्रैक्टिकल मेडिसिन टूडेज टॉपिक कफ वट इज कफ कफ इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स फिजियोलॉजिकल रिफ्लेक्स दैट इंड्यूस बाई केमिकल और मिकेनिकल इरिटेशन वट डू मीन बाई कफ कफ इट इज द कॉम्प्लेक्स फिजियोलॉजिकल रिफ्लेक्स दैट इज इंड्यूस्ड बाई आई द केमिकल और मिकेनिकल इरिटेशन इट क्लींस द ब्रोंकाई और वी कैन ऑल्सो सी दैट इट्स अ प्रोटेक्टिव मेकेनिज्म अगेंस्ट इंजरी फ्रॉम टॉक्सिक इनहेलेबल सब्सटेंसिस Clinical classification of cough. If cough is less than three weeks, then it is known as acute cough. And if the cough persists more than three weeks, then it is known as chronic cough. Clinical classification of cough: acute cough and chronic cough. First one, acute cough. It occurs at any age. It is usually caused by an upper respiratory tract infection, mainly viral. or less commonly bacterial infection also acute cough is rare in pneumonia symptoms are self limited and usually isn't required diagnostic evaluation or treatment so that is the acute cough that is of the less than 3 weeks duration chronic cough chronic cough when we can say it's more than 3 weeks of the duration if the chronic cough is common it is seen in adults it is due to smoking chronic bronchitis bronchial asthma gastroesophageal reflux post nasal drip syndrome common causes of chronic cough in elderly patients it includes smoking chronic bronchitis and post infectious some rare causes of the chronic cough in adults it includes bronchial carcinoma tuberculosis bronchiectasis pneumonia interstitial pneumopathy psychogenic foreign body aspiration cystic fibrosis some rare causes of the chronic cough in elderly patients it includes bronchial carcinoma heart failure asthma aspiration tuberculosis and pneumonia etrogenic causes of the chronic cough in adults it includes ace inhibitors and steroid and in elderly patients mainly due to ace inhibitors all these are causes of chronic cough when we can see the cough is chronic when it persists for more than 3 weeks in duration cough may be productive cough or non productive cough so the first one productive cough it expels retain secretions it's a protective mechanism in inflammatory disease of the lungs and most common cause bronchitis productive cough most common cause it is the bronchitis if the productive cough is purulent large amount putrid odor mainly due to anaerobes then causes includes the lung abscess bronchiectasis and decomposing tumor if the cough is yellowish green purulent then the causes includes chronic bronchitis pneumonia pulmonary tuberculosis mucoviscidosis if it is frothy reddish tinge then causes includes pulmonary edema pneumococcal pneumonia if the cough is viscous voluminous and frothy causes includes alveolar cell carcinoma non productive cough it is due to irritation of the airway mucosa by mechanical chemical or thermal stimulus which are the mechanical causes dust inhalation pressure on the airway from within due to a tumor foreign body or granuloma or from outside it could be due to tumor metastasis or aortic aneurysm chemical causes of non productive cough includes various gases for example ammonia tear gas or tobacco smoke thermal causes of the non productive cough it includes the hot and cold air pharyngeal cough it is due to pharyngitis or to annoying mucus in the back of the throat and uh, it is also due to some psychological causes barking or cough like cough it's a hoarse and speechless and there is involvement of epiglottis or larynx paroxysmal cough it is followed by deep stridulous inspiration it is seen in the pertussis and it's a whooping type of cough nocturnal cough it may be due to left heart failure it is known as asthma cardiale morning cough it is seen in patients of bronchiectasis and chronic bronchitis repetitive coughing it occurs either during or shortly after meals may be a sign of hiatus hernia esophageal diverticulum or neurogenic dysphagia we are continuing with the differential diagnosis of the cough 
first we are seeing disease that having cough with sputum initial investigations of cough with sputum it includes full blood count urine and electrolyte examinations and chest x ray the first condition copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease it is caused by smoking smoke pollution alpha antitrypsin deficiency here what alpha antitrypsin will do it is a protein that is produced in the liver that protects the body's tissue from being damaged by infection fighting agents that released by its immune system so it's a protective type of chemical that has been released from the liver so the condition alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency it is suggested by long history of cough either with or without sputum continuous smoking for many years recurrent exacerbations chest x ray shows radio lucent lungs and it is confirmed by spirometry force expiratory volume less than 80 percentage and feb by fvc force vital capacity and force expiratory volume ratio less than 0.7 percentage and reversibility of this it is less than 5 percentage on the ct chest there is presence of emphysema plus or minus decrease alpha 1 antitrypsin levels so all these suggestions as well as the confirmation gives the copd that is caused by smoking smoke pollution alpha antitrypsin deficiency second one acute viral bronchitis it is suggested by onset over hours or days and there is presence of fever myalgia fatigue and white or yellow sputum and it is confirmed by no focal chest signs no consolidation on chest x ray and resolution occurs within 5 days the symptoms has been resolved within 5 days if this happens then this could be the acute viral bronchitis acute bacterial bronchitis in this condition it is suggested by onset over hours or days there could be fever mucopurulent sputum and dyspnea and it is confirmed by no focal chest signs full blood cell count shows increase in the neutrophils there isn't any consolidation on the chest x ray pathogens in the sputum and cultures are present and rapid response to appropriate antibiotics here the difference between the acute viral bronchitis and acute bacterial bronchitis in viral there is white yellow sputum either white is or yellow is sputum but here in acute bacterial bronchitis it's a mucopurulent sputum fourth one pneumonia it is suggested by onset over hours or days characteristic feature of the sputum it's a rusty brown sputum sharp chest pain worse on inspiration it is along with fever cough and signs of consolidation in the lungs and it is confirmed by patchy shadowing on chest x ray and sputum or blood culture is positive in conditions of lung abscess there is copious and foul smelling sputum either for days or weeks along with fever chest pain and it is typically preceded by prior significant respiratory infection for example pneumonia on chest x ray we confirm that if there is presence of circular opacity with fluid level sputum and culture or the culture of the ct guided aspirate is present or the positive then we can say that it's a case of lung abscess also conditions in which we can found cough with sputum bronco alveolar cell carcinoma pulmonary alveolar proteinosis bronchiectasis associated with the immunodeficiency states or primary ciliary dyskinesia all these are the conditions in which we find cough with sputum now the second thing is persistent dry cough without sputum if we look at the duration of the symptoms severity and progression it determines the causes of the dry cough around 15 percentage of patients we are not able to find any cause of the dry cough as the symptoms are non life threatening so the initial management is always delay in case of persistent dry cough without sputum and which initial investigations we should advise full blood count urine and electrolyte examinations as well as chest x ray now we are seeing the persistent dry cough without sputum differential diagnosis the first one smoking it is suggested by history of smoking when we advise patient to stop smoking now what will happen the cough often worsen initially initially the cough will be worsen but as ciliary motility is restored it improves within 3 months second thing chronic asthma 
it is suggested by or the presence of chronic cough that worsens at night and early morning there is seasonal variation and other specific triggering factors for example aerosol sprays cold air perfumes smoke infectious exercise etc and there is also family history or the childhood history of asthma or atopy there is reduction or variability in the reading of the peak flow meter either there is decrease in the early morning or late evening status as well as fev that means forced expiratory volume in one second improved by 15 percentage with the treatment if we are putting the most probable diagnosis is chronic asthma next gastroesophageal reflux it is suggested by presence of cough that was by lying flat and after heavy meals there could be some type of heartburn or indigestion and there is also absence of stomach bubble on chest x ray in conditions of hiatus hernia it is confirmed by 24 hour esophageal ph monitoring or when we see improvement in coughing on raising head of the bed and with acid suppression drugs then we can definitely say that it's a gastroesophageal reflux disease next post nasal drip it is suggested by feeling of catarrh and drip in the back of the throat it was at night as well as there is presence of nasal polyps it is confirmed by improvement with the nasal decongestion drugs viral infection with slow recovery it is suggested by original onset over days associated with fever sore throat and generalized aches and it is confirmed by spontaneous or there will be some type of slow improvement depending upon the immunity the viral infection will resolve ACE inhibitors it is suggested by the drug history it is confirmed by improvement in cough when ACE inhibitor stop may take several months to resolve the symptoms of the ACE inhibitors COPD that is caused by smoking smoke pollution alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency and this type of persistent dry cough without sputum it is suggested by long history of cough there is presence of sputum maybe many years of smoking as well as recurrent exacerbations it is confirmed by spirometry test where we can find less than 80 percentage of fev1 force expiratory volume in 1 second and fev by fvc ratio less than 0.7 and reversibility is less than 15 percentage we can also find the emphysema on ct chest as well as there is plus or minus decrease in the alpha 1 antitrypsin levels all this confirmation leads to the copd that is caused by smoking smoke pollution alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency in this condition dry cough persistent dry cough is there with sputum or without sputum next condition carcinoma of lungs it is suggested by weeks or month of weight loss chest pain typically smoking history and it is associated with the worsening of the cough and there is presence of opacity on the chest x ray and or ct scan and here we can get the confirmation of carcinoma of lungs if we find tumor cell on sputum cytology or on endobronchial ct guided biopsy next condition pulmonary tuberculosis it is suggested by weeks or months of fever that is associated with malaise weight loss and contact history or high risk groups that means there is contact history of the patient with other tuberculosis positive patient it is confirmed by chest x ray that we can find opacification especially in apical segment of the lung but can be find anywhere all over the lung there is presence of acid fast bacillus on smear sputum culture and or response to treatment and we can also find that if the pulmonary tuberculosis patient is on the probable diagnosis but these are response to treatment even if the culture is negative and no other explanation for the symptoms so this all condition can gives us the diagnosis of the pulmonary tuberculosis interstitial lung disease in this condition it is suggested by there is presence of chronic dry cough occupational exposure or evidence of underlying connective tissue disease in the majority of the cases of interstitial lung disease there is no cause is identified there is presence of clubbing cyanosis reduced chest expansion there is presence of coarse late inspiratory by basal crackles we can give the confirmation when we find reduced lung volumes and reticular nodular shadowing on chest x ray 
interstitial shadowing and or subpleural fibrosis on high resolution CT chest. If you find all these characteristics on chest x-ray or the high resolution CT chest then we can say that it's a interstitial lung disease. I hope now we are able to understand about the cough. If you like this presentation, please try to share it with your friends, group, batch and colleagues. Thank you so much everyone.